definitely untying the lines today. I'm in a train to go to Lyon and from Lyon to Montpellier and from, from uh, Montpellier to uh, Paul Le Cat. Uh, I'm going by train because I'm not coming back. Uh, so I've got my luggage here, luggage here, and a seat cushion from Galopin. The cushion fell out of the trailer that had all my stuff that Daniel was taking to his house while we were working on the boat. So as I was driving down the road, all of a sudden I um, see this cushion. I'm like, holy shit, it's my cushion from Galopin. So I picked it up, put it in the car, drove all the way back to Switzerland with the stupid uh, horn silly seat cushion and now I have to bring it back by hand on the train with my last belongings as I'm untying the lines for real this time so here we come Galopin definitely heading off to sail around the world now that's right man the winded voyage is really really on its way for real but it's starting on a train so I'm back here from my uh, quick stay in Switzerland. It's Friday night uh, and uh, I'm gonna sleep in my little cabin. Uh, that's the only spot that's uh, somewhat um, livable and tomorrow I'm gonna really make some, some headway. On va commencer par découper tous ces trucs là. Et là, moi je trouve que c'est bien parce que c'est vrai, on peut le toi, on peut le toucher depuis ici. D'accord. Hein? Et moi je te dis souvent, tu sais, on sera là comme ça à regarder ce qui se passe. Ouais, ouais. Et je trouve que c'est bien qu'il soit à high level, tu sais, au ouais, niveau ouais. des yeux pour nous. Mais Daniel's the man. After a brief uh, stint in Switzerland to do a paying job, I let myself go a little bit and uh, this is what has happened after about 10 days. My beard grew. I'm gonna let all this grow until uh, we're done with the boat and Galopin is going off to sea. Maybe I won't shave and just be some kind of hairy furry dude. We've almost finished the bathroom with all new tubing. Um, a new sink faucet, uh, new connections to the hot water, etc. Uh, a new through hole for uh, the shower pump, which I didn't have before. So that's almost all done. We've done all the electrics uh, and pulled all the wires, etc., etc. But now we just need to put the, in the electrical uh, circuit board uh, and the whole navigation area. In the starboard cabin, we're going to turn that into a storage area and the pump system has been installed and it's uh, ready to be connected we have a nice new bilge pump which i didn't have before and that's pretty bad not to have a bilge pump and i've been watching and learning and helping and assisting but uh, the majority of the work has been daniel so we still have to put the batteries back in to the compartment area the battery pack's gonna go down here two batteries like this one gel uh, technology battery. We're waiting for some final tubing and a emergency gas shutoff valve, which was broken and gave me engine problems and engine failure when I was out um, near Barcelona with Bix. Daniel has retubed and refitted the, uh, the water heater. So we have limited any kind of uh, water leakage uh, and pressure leakage. And then in the um, port trunk here, uh, Daniel noticed that my exhaust uh, pipe and tubing were just, again, coupled and linked and everything, and it was just a mess, so he's replaced the entire uh, diesel exhaust. We've got these made by a carpenter. It's not teak, it's a cheaper version of, of teak, it's a hardwood, so I'm just gonna drill some holes from underneath and refit that, and then we can start working on 
the rigging. Bring in a re reefs and the halyard for the mainsail here in the cockpit. So we're gonna hopefully do this then this week and then take the boat out and take the mats down and check that all the connections and the wires are good in the mast because we're uh, I've got my um, anchoring light it's not working we've also had a problem with the main navigational lights the red and green light uh, at the bow were was not working anymore but at the moment there's no electricity except the 220 volt so I have an extension cord for a light and I have no fridge so it's a bit of a pain in the ass I'm really camping and <laughs> Daniel's been kind enough to feed me here and there. The bad guys. There's the man. Dan, the man. Oh, wow. Wow, God, looks up. Oh, my God. Daniel, merci. Wow. Mm. It's not too bad because on Wednesday we should have all the electrics back on and then I'll be able to go buy a few things to. Uh, feed myself um, and have a little bit of home comfort. Now, it's not the most comfortable, but at the same time, it's really comfortable to sleep in the front cabin because it's uh, cozy and still warm and I can watch my sailing videos and I watched the Pats kick the Buffalo's ass this Sunday. Well, it looks like a pretty beautiful morning. I'm gonna head out and get some milk, coffee, I've run out of milk, and get a baguette or something like that, <clears throat> because I have uh, almost no more food to eat. Uh, I still don't have the fridge, but I've got running water. I've got um, the stove. Hopefully soon today, Daniel will hook up everything so we have the, um, the fridge going, the electrics. I've been living off an extension cord and a um, workshop light. I uh, took down a boom, got the mast all uh, ready to be taken down. That should be done next week, so Galapan is looking kind of uh, kind of naked. We're doing uh, also refitting the rail here. So that's been removed. I just had to bring it over to Dan and uh, I found something really cool. It turns out the guy who does the bimini stuff came by and said hey you have a zipper on the back of your uh, bimini it must be for something and I said well you know I have this rain catcher but I don't know if that's where it goes so we pulled out the rain catcher and guess what that's where it goes it's really cool check this out tie it up and it'll catch the rain and then just attach a tube and the tube will go right straight down into the tanks I think it's pretty awesome yesterday I had a visit from the customs officers because of this yeah my Swiss flag, my Swiss pavilion, my Swiss citizenship. And uh, they said everything was in order. That uh, as a Swiss citizen, I have, I can only stay here 18 months or the boat can only stay here 18 months. And since I've been here nearly a year, in January it'll be a year, I have approximately six or seven months uh, left to stay. Then I have to take the boat or galopin out of territorial waters, territorial European waters. That means Turkey or Gibraltar or North Africa. Just for a day, get a stamp of proof that I've been there and then I can come back in for another 18 months. So I've got untitled lines for real. This is no shit, man. So there it is. That's my neighbor Philippe's uh, spot. He's got an aluminum boat. It's beautiful. It's a nice boat. Uh, and he's been retired for a couple years now. He's an ex-pharmaceutical guy. So, wink wink, he's a drug dealer, or an ex-drug dealer. And uh, he's been, he's hauled out his boat here and he's been working on it, seems like for days. He's at it and at it and at it. And uh, my heart goes out to him because he's at it by himself. Luckily, I have uh, Daniel. Philippe is all of such a perfectionist. He kind of reminds me of Mads for a sail life who keeps fixing and fixing and fixing things perfectly. I'm like, dude, quit fixing things and get your ass out there and sail, man. Get out there and go around the world. Dan the man. <laughs> the man that gets it done. Okay, Metro. I shit you. 
Galopin is a great vessel, well built, and I knew it had a few problems. But these few issues were all shit waiting to happen, and Daniel knew it. He's refitted and prepared literally thousands of boats. Thousands! He's not a weekend do-it-yourselfer like most of us. He's an all-out professional. He knows how boats can fail, break, and sink. He's like a boat fortune teller. Everything he does is to avoid future problems. Everything he's undertaken has been made for easy access and fitted to last. Daniel knows boats and their issues because he's lived them. Several Atlantic crossings and deliveries has taught him what it's like to have boat failures in the open seas. He's seen broken masts, torn sails, wasted autopilots, cooked out electronics and electrics, busted steering, and tons more other crap. Ask him where he's been to fix boats, and he sounds like a marina atlas. Spain, Italy, Croatia, Greece, Turkey, Singapore, Thailand, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Virgin Islands, <sighs> even Miami. And that's just the ones that I've heard of. As well, he's fixed and prepared boats for celebrities, even the King of Morocco. And he's treating Galapa and me like kings, or better yet, like a big brother looking out for you. Like Bix, who looked out for me on the seas, Daniel's looking out for me to have a safe, comfortable, and performing vessel. He's another guardian angel. T'as vu comme il est méchant? Tu savais que le gruyère il a pas de trou? C'est l'emmental qui a des trous. Non. Bonjour. Bonjour. Tu te tout le temps, Bouba. Ouais. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Bigs. Come on, Lily, speak in English. Allez, yeah. Like daddy. Vas-y, Shakira. Aujourd'hui, débattage de Galopin. On se bonjour presque son vent. shown me what a boat refit really is. And along the way, he's taught me about Galapon and how to take care of him. This is costing me some time and money, but the return on investment could be life-saving. Almighty Neptune has been very kind to me. He's presented me to Dan, the man. Many thanks for you. Robert is coming with us? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> it's the trio of the health. No. Yes, the trio d'enfer. Ah, the trio d'enfer, okay. Health, health trio. Health trio.